sing all my life. All my life you have been faithful. It's all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing all my life. It's all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good, yeah. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to sing, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Well, good morning, Potter's House Family Worship Center. We are excited that you are joining us today on this Facebook Live service. And we are so excited to see you live next Sunday at our outdoor service. We love you and we have just so missed worshiping with you here in the building, but again, are so thankful for the gift of technology that we're able to worship together today in our homes, in our kitchens, on your walks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that we can lift up the name of Jesus. And the promise remains the same, that as we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. And so today we're going to worship the Lord together. We're going to sing like no one is watching because no one is. We're going to dance like no one is watching because no one is but him. So it's for an audience of one. So push away that coffee table, move back the couches, and get ready to just celebrate Jesus. The Bible says in Psalms 13, I sing to the Lord for he has been good to me. He has been good to me, and God's goodness does not change. He was good yesterday. He is good today, and he will be good forever. And so today I felt that we were to just sing of the goodness of God because this is bedrock. This is something that will not change. This is the very makeup of who he is. He is love. He is kindness. He is goodness. He is bigger, stronger, greater than anything that we face, anything that we go through in this life. He is everything that he says he is. And so if you don't know the words to the song, I encourage you, make up your own words. My dad's been doing that for years. It works for him. It will work for you. Put whatever words you want in there. Sing his name, Jesus, Jesus, over and over again. Catch back up on the words that you do know. And most of what we're going to sing is just, you are good. So just keep saying that to him and just lift that up. You are good. You are good. And I love the story in Chronicles that as they went to battle, the Lord said, I want you to send the worshipers first. And what they sang about wasn't, we're going to destroy you and you're going to die, enemy. But they sang of the goodness of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. And as they did that, it says that the enemy killed itself and they never had to lift a sword. And so today, let's just worship God and let's remember the power of when God's people worship him, when they lift him up and when they exalt him. He is worthy of our praise this morning. Amen. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. And my daughter and I, we come today just to worship you, to celebrate you, to an audience of one. We sing out our song. Father God, we tap our feet, we clap our hands, we lift up our hands to you. You are worthy of the highest praise. You are worthy. You were worthy yesterday. You are worthy today. And you will always be worthy because you are everything you say you are. You were everything you say you were yesterday and you are today and you will always be everything you say you are. You are bedrock under our feet. You are an unchanging God and who you are is unchanging. And we celebrate that today in this place. We love you, Lord with all that we are, with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. You are good, God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy. Oh, your mercy never fails me in all my days. and all my days, I've been held in your hands from the moment, from the moment that I wake up. 
Until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good, yeah. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. You have led me through the fire. And in darkest night, you are close. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness, in the goodness of God. Sing all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have. All my life you have been so, so good, yeah. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, sing all my life. Yes, all my life you have been faithful, all my life. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing, your goodness is running. Your goodness is running out. Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Sing your goodness. Your goodness is running after to me. Your goodness is running after, running after me with my life, with my life laid down. I surrender now, and I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me all my life. All my life you have been faithful. Sing all my life. Oh my life, you have been so, so good, yeah. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. One more time, all my life. Oh my life, you have been faithful. Sing all oh my life. Oh my life, you have been so, so good, yeah. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing, yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to sing, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. I'll sing of your goodness. I'll sing of your goodness. I'll sing of your goodness. And I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your love. Though the seasons come quickly, you have always been enough. Though the night may get darker, though the waiting seems long, you have always been faithful to remind me of your love. And you are good in the morning. Been paid. 
consistent through the ages oh what a friend of mine so i remind my soul to bless you standing firm upon your truth knowing you cannot be shaken because i've seen what you can do oh, oh, oh you Consistent through the ages, oh what a friend of mine. So I remind my soul to bless you, standing firm upon your truth, knowing you can never be shaken. Cause I've seen what you can do. Oh, you Sing it out, you are 
No matter what I'm going through, I will declare that you are. Yes, you are. Good. In the mo- in the morning, I say you yeah, are good. In the evening, in the evening, I say you are good. Yeah, you are good. Goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. I declare it this morning. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Every day of my life, your goodness is running after, running after me. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me sing that again before I spoke a word before I spoke a word you were singing over me God we just recount your faithfulness today you have been so so good to me we have so many reasons to worship this morning before I took a breath before I took a breath you breathe your life in me you have been so so kind to me and oh and oh the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of god 
Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah. So many reasons to rejoice, so many reasons to praise you. When I was your fool, still your love fought for me. You've been so good, you have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth. I feel no worth. You paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind. You have been so, so kind to me. And oh, and oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down. Fights till I found leaves of 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. about the love of God, we think about this gentleness, and it is that. Like a mama lion can carry her cubs in her mouth with the same teeth that she hunts with. 
that same ferocious jaw can gently hold her young. But he's also this fierce father, this warrior God. And I heard someone once say, when you sing this next line, there's no shadow he won't light up and there's no wall he won't kick down. I want you to picture him like a police SWAT team breaking in to a building that's been locked, kicking down the doors tearing down the lies, anything that separated you from him. Because his love for you is fierce. His love for you is ferocious. He fights for us. He fights for us. So I just want you to picture that this morning as we sing that. No shadow you won't light up, mountain he won't climb up, coming out to me and just picture him doing that today. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me and oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God and oh it chases me down fights tell don't deserve it still you gave yourself away i couldn't i couldn't earn it i don't i couldn't earn it i couldn't earn it don't deserve i couldn't earn i couldn't earn it i don't it's the beauty of your love i couldn't earn oh i'll never deserve it oh i'll never earn it and i'll never Till you give yourself away And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God oh, oh, oh. Hey. Thank you for your love Thank you for your love, God so so good to me you have been you have been so so good to me You've been so so good you have been so so good to me Jesus all my life you have been so, so good to me. I can see your fingerprints, God. You've been, you have been so, so good to me. Where would I be without you, God? You have been so, so good to me. Even in the midst of all I'm going through, I declare. You've been so, so good to me. You have been so, so good. 
so good to me. make that declaration today it is well with our soul we thank you Jesus Christ for redemption we thank you for the blood of Jesus that bought us out of the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son God today we thank you we rejoice in our salvation God we just thank you for sending your son Jesus to make a way for us God so it can be well with our soul we pray today for anyone watching this Facebook Live, God, that is, is there's a weariness in their soul. We release life now. We release a refreshing move of the Spirit of God just to rejoice and to bring forth the joy of God from inside of the inner man. Father God, today we declare it in the name of Jesus. Strengthen with might your body today, God. 
Father, we just declare today we are the church, we are the people of God, we are the redeemed of the Lord. And God, we're going to say so. We're going to say so. We're going to say so. We are the redeemed of the Lord. We are the redeemed of the Lord. It is well with our soul. It is. It is. It is well with me. Yes, it is. No matter what my eyes now see, mm. it is it's well, well with me. It, it is, is well, well with me. me. Huh. It is well with me. Hallelujah. It is well with me. Hallelujah. Go back to the article by Mario Murillo where he talked about one of the things to model in this season is faith. To be a, a people of faith, a people who trust God, a people who walk with God, a people who don't let our peace be stolen from us, don't let our joy be stolen from us, a people who walk in this confidence in the Lord. And to model it, you that are parents, to model it for your family. Your kids will have seasons as they get older and stuff like that. They walk through challenges, but they, they need to see a parents. They need to see us, older believers, walking through it with a confidence in God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, bless you today. We're glad that you're uh, connected with us on Facebook Live. And we're going to uh, <clears throat> have an opportunity where you can give your offerings online. I know Mary will shoot up the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, slide up there again. It kind of tells you uh, for this season we're uh, receiving offerings online. And then also you can mail them in. And just again want to thank everybody for your faithfulness. This is Memorial Day weekend, and I just want to take a few moments this morning to share a couple of thoughts while you're uh, uh, getting ready to uh, give your offering. We're going to pray for, uh, for, uh, for that in just a second as well. But three years after the Civil War ended on May 5, 1868, the head of an organization of Union veterans, the Grand Army of the Republic, established Decoration Day as a time for the nation to decorate the graves of the war dead with flowers. Major General John A. Logan declared that Declaration Day should be observed on May 30th. I think it was in 1970-something that we moved it to the first Monday of May. It is believed that date was chosen because flowers would be in bloom all over the country. The, large, the first large observance was held that year at the Arlington National Cemetery across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. Memorial Day is a time that we honor and remember those who died in battle for freedom. Veterans Day is a day that we honor all veterans, all that have served in our military and in defense of our nation. But today it's a time for us to re remember and to give gratitude for those who paid. I, I love the, the statement on the back of the Korean War uh, Memorial where it says freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. It cost. And it cost 1.2 million Americans died in battle over the years. Uh, 498,000 died in the Civil War. 4,435 died in the Revolutionary War. In World War I, we had 116,000 Americans die. In World War II, it was 405,000 Americans died in the battle against tyranny. The Korean War, we had 54,000. Vietnam, we had 90,000. In the Persian Gulf War, there were 1,565. And on the global war on terror, there's been 6,852 who have died in defense of freedom. So today, we want to take a moment. We're going to have a moment of silence, and then I, I want to pray. It's an opportunity for us to remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, the families that have paid the ultimate sacrifice, giving a son, uh, a husband, a father, for the defense of freedom. And again, I can't encourage enough as parents to teach your children and encourage them to honor the importance of honor, the power of honor, and to honor those who are deserving. And today we're doing that as in observance of Memorial Day. So let's take a moment of silence, and then I'm going to pray. God, we just honor. We just honor you. We honor what other people have given themselves. Mm. Mm. 
Psalm 27, 3 through 4 says, Though an army besieges you, me, my heart will not fear. The war breaks out against me. Even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Today we bow our heads and our hearts, God, to you. We remember those today who paid the ultimate price by giving their lives for their country. Whew. God, we can never be grateful enough for the sacrifices made for our country. And we are humbled today by their willingness to put their own lives aside for the benefit of ours. God, we are humbled today by those who have went before us willing to put their own lives aside for the benefit of ours. Father, carve their sacrifices onto our hearts that we may never forget the loss of these heroes. God, today we pray, carve on our hearts the revelation, God, of what people have paid for us to experience the liberties and the freedom that we have. God, today we pray this in the name of Jesus. God, we pray it today. God, I just pray a, a, a understanding of honor and the power and the importance of honor. God, that our nation would never lose the understanding of honor, the importance of honoring. We pray it today in Jesus' name. We're going to give you a moment as Nikki just plays on the piano to greet one another on Facebook Live. Maybe write a, a word of honor, thanking those who have given their life. Maybe a, a, a remembrance that you want to place on that just speak it out to others that are watching today. Maybe you want to just put down a few words of gratitude. But let's just take about two minutes here and give you an opportunity to greet one another today on Facebook Live, and we're going to talk about next week here in just a second. Thank you, Shiloh, for joining your mom today, singing with us and leading us forward. Well, I want you to know we were here in the building, and it's only just a small group of us. Uh, Elder Fred Cantu is going to preach today. He broke out in a dance earlier. I just want you to know when nobody else was here, like Pastor Nicky was saying. <laughs> you know how he always says he's dancing inside, but his feet just aren't moving? Well, today, man, I, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just teasing some, but. Uh, hallelujah. We're just uh, juiced up about this week coming forward and our reassembling on uh, May 31st, Pentecost Sunday. I just want to mention Wednesday night, Word Club, there's going to be an awards night. You know how everything has just been kind of out of sync and stuff, but Wednesday night we're going to do a, an honoring of all of our children that have been part of Word Club this year. And I, I just, they studied First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, and so we're going to have a parking lot celebration. The kids are going to circle up in their cars with their parents. And, and we would like at 7 o'clock for people to drive by and just give a shout out. And you can make signs. 
you can beep your horns, honk your horns, where we just celebrate these, uh, these young kids as they pursued to, to walk after Jesus. So I just want to read just a couple of things. To earn points, they had to do Bible study homework. They earned badges for doing things like a word study, a Bible study, or a sermon. They had some great sermons. Maybe you saw some on Facebook. Uh, verbal presentations, they had to do it verbally. They pray twice a day for three weeks and report the experience. So they're beginning to cultivate a prayer life and many other things there that they were rewarded for serving others. And so we're going to celebrate those kids Wednesday night. And we encourage you to drive by and just kind of turn around and go back on out. You can. But just come by and just celebrate the kids. Give a shout out. Beep the horn. Honk the horn. If you want to have a sign, that would be great as well as we honor and celebrate our kids for all, that, uh, all the hard work that they put in this year. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to talk about next Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, May 31st. We will uh, open, reopen for services. We're blessed to have all the property we have as a church. We have like 31 acres here, and we're going to be able to use some of those because we're going to, in June, we're going to hold our services outdoors, so that's going to give everybody a lot of room. Uh, for social distancing, if you uh, depend on how much room you want, but we're encouraging everybody to keep a social distance as we've uh, uh, continued to be encouraged to do. We're going to sit outside, bring your lawn chairs. If you want to bring a little tent over you, you can. We're going to have a tent here for seniors uh, who may not want to sit in your cars. You can come out. We'll have a tented area for you out of the sun, but most of us will just be sitting in parts of the parking lot and the lawn uh, and be able to view the service. It's going to I grew up in the, I got born again in 1977, it's toward the end of the Jesus movement, and uh, they had, we used to have outdoor concerts all the time, I mean, there would be festivals, Jesus festivals, and we used to have one over at Blanchard at the Mill Pond every summer, and we'd go over there, we'd camp, we'd just shout for Jesus all weekend and stuff like that. That's what this feels like, feels like old time camp meeting, we're going to be outside, there's something about being outside and looking up and seeing the glory of God and worshiping the Lord, so we encourage you, next Sunday, May 31st, bring your friends. We got space, enough space for everyone. We figured it out. One of the brothers did the other day in a meeting. He said we could have 4,000 people and still have six-foot spacing. So you got, you got space. I mean, we could bring on one-sixth of the community. I think there's 25,000 live in Mount Pleasant City. We could almost bring one-sixth of the community. So bring your friends. Bring your family. It's going to be a powerful time. Pentecost Sunday, they're talking, uh, prophets are declaring this fresh outpouring, this whole reset. Uh, the Lord spoke to me the other day. He said, just like in Acts 2, Pentecost was the birth of the church. There is a new breaking out in the church next Sunday that's going to happen. There's churches all over the nation that are going to hold service. It was interesting. I kept contacting different friends, and almost every one of them had heard from the Lord May 31st. Do it Pentecost Sunday. Come out Pentecost Sunday. And some did before. They heard the Lord. God told them to do it quicker. Not saying anything there at all. Praise God for that. But God, I know, spoke to me May 31st, and as I was talking to friends, different ones, different states, God is going to do something powerfully May 31st. So we encourage you to come. We encourage everyone uh, as you're moving around. We encourage you to wear a mask uh, uh, as, we, as we would move around. When you're in your spot, different places, don't have to wear a mask. We're just When we get close to one another in proximity, we're asking that we would, we would encourage you to, to wear a mask. Uh, hallelujah. You should have received a survey that came out. If you could fill that out and uh, get it into the church by tomorrow. It's kind of helping us to prepare. We're looking at how many want to stay in your car. There's three ways next Sunday you'll be able to be part of the service. One is to come, sit on the lawn, sit in the, the seating area. Two is you can stay in your car and listen to the service. Or three, you can still continue to do Facebook Live. We're hoping to gather in some people. If there's inclement weather, we want you to pray. Every Sunday in June is blessed, right? Amen. The, the sunny skies, it's beautiful outside. But if there's ever inclement weather, we're looking at trying to do some watch parties, and we'll be talking about that too. But to, this Sunday, May 31st, come and sit on the lawn or sit in your car. Be a part. I think we're all, uh, there's been an incredible grace on preaching to nobody in the audience. But I'm telling you what, we're, we're juiced up about all of us being together and just seeing each other. And I, I hear it from everybody from our body. So don't miss next Sunday, May 31st. Come together. you got room to be as comfortable as you can. We're trying to create a space where everybody feels comfortable. But we're after God. We're chasing God. We're blessed today. Our elder Fred Cantu is going to preach. And so 
Fasten your seat belts. I mean, if he was dancing earlier, you better watch out now. So Fred's going to come and preach this morning. And God bless you. We'll see everybody in person next Sunday. Well, good morning. Oh, uh, I wish I were dancing. I wish that were true. I tell you, even though this is empty in here, it's still, it would still be a bull in a china shop if I got moving around here. So I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have any rhythm whatsoever. So, But I'm uh, just thankful to be in the house of the Lord. It, it's, uh, I can tell you, being at home, watching Facebook Live, uh, we can still worship we can still praise, but there's a different atmosphere, a different anointing when you come into the presence here, uh, and it sure felt good just to be in God's house. I know that, I know that uh, God isn't limited to the four walls here, but just to His presence, His anointing, the worship, the actual being in the worship was a, is a real blessing and, and just felt encouraging and uplifting, and, and how, man, it just is like it was needed. So, I is Pastor Ron. I can't. I can't encourage that any much more than what he did. Come out next week where we're able to see each other. Oh, it's going to be a refreshing time. Hallelujah! I expect great things to happen. I expect my expectation of what God is going to do next week is so elevated that we're just going to see things just change. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So. Uh, I, a pastor asked me to share today. Uh, we do. Uh, I do want to slow myself down because I do have a tendency to want to run ahead. We do uh, thank those men and women that uh, on Memorial Day here for the ultimate sacrifice that they give uh, for us that we could have the freedom that we have today. So we do honor those men and women. Hallelujah. I bet you coming into 2020, you didn't think that we would be called to be in our homes, stuck in our homes for two months, not interacting, not inter couldn't touch or look at anyone or be in contact with anyone. It is a life-changing experience. But I want to just encourage us that as we continue to be, uh, be in this uh, place of uh, stay home and stay safe, you're not alone. You have God with you. God is there in the presence of His Spirit is within you. And I know that in times past, uh, I've shared this, this scripture, and some may say, Fred, you've pounded this scripture every time that you've preached this message. It seems like every sermon that you've preached, you've had this, had this, uh, had this, uh, this sermon or this uh, passage of scripture. But to me, this is what God has been speaking even since 2019, is from Isaiah 48. You have heard, see all this. We didn't see this coming. Nobody seen what was taking place. But he says, and will you not declare it? I have made you hear new things. I believe that in this time, in this season that we are in, as a stay home and stay safe, that we're in a place that we can hear what God is saying. What is the new things that he's saying? You know, I asked the Lord that because I've said, well, I've used this scripture and I keep saying God is speaking a new thing. And will you not know it? Or, and, he, and, and even the hidden things, and you did not know them. But I'm going to share with you today what God has been speaking to me. God has shared with me in my time of, 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 of secludedness that we can, that we can come to, as we came together and just kind of stayed at home. God spoke to me. He said this, and he just said it in a whisper. He said, a battleship. You know, God is calling forth his army. We heard that in his message from time to time, we hear that God is raising up an army. He's calling for the boots on the ground. And when God spoke of the battleship, that resonated in me. And later on that, that day, or I can't remember what day it was, it was several weeks ago, at least three weeks ago, when God spoke this to me. He said, battleship. Later on that day, I've, I got a confirmation because a brother in the Lord posted. He says, the church is no longer, can no longer be a cruise ship. 
but it needs to become the battleship that it was designed to. God is calling for all hands on deck, even in this time that we have of being stay home and stay safe. God isn't saying just to sit back and relax, but he's saying dig in and be ready because when you come out, you're going to be changed. You're not going to look the same. You're not going to be the pretty the pretty uh, uh, cruise ship or the cruise liner, but you're going to be a battleship ready for battle and to face anything that comes your way. Hallelujah. Because this is what God is calling his church. He's calling his church to arise. Hallelujah. Another, another uh, word that he spoke to me was new garments. We're changing the way we look, church. We're changing the way we are presented to the world. God is removing those garments on us, and now he has placed us in those robes of righteousness. You are getting new garments as we come forth. Out of we come out of this, we're going to be a new looking, a brightness of his, of his glory. We're going to seek, we're going to shine like we've never shined before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, this virus, I put in my notes, it says it is a time for the church to reflect. No, God shut the world down. He stopped everything that was taking place. And it was a time for us to reconnect to him, to be in that place that we can stand with him, to draw from him and be in that place where we can trust him. It was no, it, the whole, the, this whole thing changed for us. See, but I'm reminded of a portion of scripture. When things changed for King David... He was going to face the Amalekites. He was, had everything going for him. He was ready. He rounded up the troops, and they went. But the enemy came and captured everything that he had. The people were a little bit distraught. His men were distraught, and they were ready to stone him. But David had to go strengthen himself. He had to go to a place in a secluded place where he could spend that time with God. And this is where we're at. We're in that place where we can speak to God and God can speak to us because he wants to show you the new things, the hidden things that he's doing. There's a word that God has placed inside of you. You probably haven't spoke it yet. You, maybe you haven't declared it yet, but God is saying to you, speak it forth. Because what we are seeing and what we are saying will shape the way we look when we come out. If we're speaking distress, if we're speaking discord, if we're speaking the doom and gloom, then that's what we're going to look when we come out. But if we're speaking God's goodness and we're speaking His power and we're speaking His righteousness, we're going to come out looking much different than we went in. Because God is shaping and changing David had to go and strengthen himself in the presence of the Lord. And this is where we are at. We've had a time of reshaping and, re, and restructuring and, re, and rethinking. We've heard words of, of reset. And I believe that their God is resetting, this, is he's resetting his body, that it's not going to look the same coming out. And he's also doing a shifting. There's some shifting that is taking place within the body. We don't do church the way we used to anymore. We're doing it via the, the technology that is around about us. There's some shifting that is taking place. But another word that I've heard was shaking. God is shaking us as a church to shake us loose from those things that are not of him. And you can go with me, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27. It's there in my notes. Uh, that, I, that I forward on or forward to pastor, and he forwarded on to you. But Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27, and it says this, it says, Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as the things that are made. Hallelujah. That the things which cannot be shaken remain. Therefore, since we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace which, by which we, by which, oh, excuse me, we may receive, may serve God acceptably, with reverence in godly fear. 
We have received God's kingdom, that it cannot be shaken. It cannot be moved. But in this season that we are in, things have been shaken. Things have been removed. I found things that I thought, well, I'm, I, I was ready. I'm prepared. But God shook some things off of my life. Some of the things that, we, that maybe you, you're thinking of is, is fear and maybe doubt. or maybe uh, there's, Those things can be shaken because those are not of God. Those are not from his kingdom. But he says, what I've given you, he says, I've given to you a, a kingdom that it cannot be shaken. So what is in that kingdom? We, we see that in another portion of, script, of Scripture that it, call, it talks about the fruits of, those, of the Spirit. We have love, we have joy, we have peace. Long-suffering also can be patience. Being in a place for three months, almost three months now, patience is going to have to be built up. You're going to, they're long suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Being faithful and continually to remain and giving praise and giving worship to God, knowing that you're not alone, knowing that you can be strengthened by Him in this time and in this season. God is changing the way the church looks. We shouldn't look the same when we come out of this season. We should be a glorious church. We should look like we're ready for anything, that whatever comes our way, we're ready to face those challenges. We're not going to be a church that is saying, what do we do? We're going to know what we do. We're going to run to God. We're going to be in his presence. We're going to strengthen ourselves, and we're going to come out shining and ready to take on. We're going to be a church that is going to declare. We're going to be a church that is going to decree because God has put the words in our mouth through the power of his spirit because the kingdom that he's given us cannot be shaken. You're a kingdom person. You're a kingdom nation. He's rose up kings and priests for this time and for this season. The king represents authority. The priest represents the able ability to go before the father and receive what, he, what is needed for this time. You're a kingdom person. Breathe in kingdom air. Hallelujah, because you have uh, received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That word kingdom also means dominion and rule. If we take a look in the book of Genesis, God has given you and me the body, the, the, the authority to rule here in this earth. It says he gave man to have dominion over the earth. If we're here in this place, we have dominion to change those things that we don't have to look the same. We can be a different coming. We can be different as we come out. Hallelujah. This kingdom also represents a firm, a, stable, a stability. It's not weak. It's solid. It's secure. That's God's kingdom. It can't be shaken. But what, what is not of God will be shaken. And there's times, church, we need to let go of those things that are not of God. You know of those things. Maybe some of you are, are still hanging on to some things to, because you're thinking, no, if, it's, if God is shaking it from you, let it go. It's not of him. He says, because what I have given you cannot be shaken. It will remain. Church, allow God to do the shifting. Allow God to do the shaking. Allow him to do the reset because when you reset, it comes to a, we're, we're in a new place. We're in a new position. We're ready for what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13, 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to, to his name. Let's give God the sacrifice of praise. Even in this time of, of being at home and being locked in and, and nowhere to go, I'm glad that some of the things are starting to lift, but let's continue to praise. Just because they're lifting doesn't mean we go back. We got to continue to say, God, what are you doing for my future? I don't want to look the same when I went in. I want to look different when I come out. I want to look, I want to look completely different that people are going to see the difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The children of Israel wanted to, they always, when they came to a hard place or when they came to a challenging time, they wanted to always go back to Egypt. But God was pointing them to the promised land. He says, I have something better for you. I got something greater for you. If you just keep pressing in and keep pressing on, 
Just continue to seek God. Continue to get in that presence. God is, doesn't want you to return back to Egypt. He wants you to get into that promised land. Lot's wife yearned for the past to return to that place. And what happened to her? She turned into a pillar of salt. She got stuck where she was at. Don't be stuck where you're at by saying, I don't know if I want to go back or if I want to go forward. Always look to God because he's going to take you deeper. He's going to take you higher. He told in the book of Revelations, he told John, he says, come up here, I want to show you. God is wanting to show you something more, even in this time that he has in store for the church today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to wipe the sweat off my brow now. You guys got me all worked up. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, don't, don't remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. There has been times that I've thought, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. How are we going to be able to? And God has said, don't look to the things of, of the past, but look to me because I'm about to do the new thing. And it shall spring forth. And just as we continue to pre keep praying, God would reveal how that thing was going to happen. He was the provider. He was the one that made the way when it seems to be impossible. God will make it possible. As we continue to stay in his presence, as we continue to stay in that place where we can hear from him and receive from him. Isaiah 65 verse 17 says, Behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall no longer remember, be remembered or come to mind. Hallelujah. Church, you're that new heaven. You're that new, you're that new earth. We're that new creation that God is talking about. He is talking about bringing that new, cre I'm creating this new heaven and a new earth because he's saying, I'm going to change you from the way you looked. The old shall not remember, the, 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 the former shall not come to remembrance. God is calling for in this season a new church, a new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That word new is uh, kinos. Recently made, fresh, unused. Hallelujah. The substance of that means a new kind or unheard of. Hallelujah. It's unheard of of what we've been in today. Been in this past few months. Because we've heard the word reset. He's making a fresh. He's making a, a, a new kind. Church, God is reshaping us in this season. He is shaking those things that don't belong. He wants us to be free from those things that have held us back. And what, what is preventing us from moving forward. In this time and in the season that we're in, we're in a place where God is saying, I'm creating a new heaven and a new church. A, a 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. See, God is speaking that to us, a new heaven and a new earth. He's recreating us. And as he goes on to say, the old things shall pass away. And he says, behold, all things have become new. God is doing that new thing in our lives. He's reshaping us. He's re-presenting uh, us back into the earth. We've heard that word represent. God is representing his church to this, in this time and in this season to the world. He's saying, this is what my church is going to look like. It's going to be changed from what it was before. It's not going to look the same. It's going to come out transformed, reformed, and it's going to look a fresh new look. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to share with you how we become that new heaven and that new earth, that new creation that 2 Corinthians talks about, that Isaiah 65 is telling us the new heaven and the new earth. Genesis, if you go to the book of Genesis in chapter 1, verse 26, when God said, Lake, let, make, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let him have dominion. Hallelujah. There's that dominion that God is giving us to operate here in the earth. 
He's giving us the ability to have control and, and, and take authority of those things that are taking place, but he needs his body to get into that place to begin to speak it. Genesis 2.27 says this, and he says, And God formed man from the dust of the ground, the breath of his nostrils, and he breathed life, and man became a living being. You take a look and you go and look in that word dust or that ground. It means earth. It means the substance of the earth. And then he said he breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. That's the kingdom that God breathed inside of us. We read about it. We hear about it. That's, that Jesus even said, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand because it's inside of you. It's what we are here. It's what we declare. It's, it's around about us because we bring that kingdom presence. We bring that new heaven into this earth, heaven and earth coming together, presenting the kingdom of God and bringing that new earth, which is us being transformed, not from the former, but to the new, that we're presenting the goodness of God. We're being that true reflection here in the earth. We're being the image of God because we're in the made in his likeness. Hallelujah. God is reshaping us. God is re retuning us. Hallelujah. Because he's saying he's, uh, he's creating that new heaven. Isaiah 66, 22 says, For as the new heaven and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me. That's you and I. That's Jesus that was before him. But he, Jesus says, the works that I do, he says, greater works you should do. So he said, this is what I'm making you. I'm, I'm giving you what I have, and I'm giving it to you. Hallelujah. So the Lord, says the Lord. You shall be a in you and your descendants, and your name shall remain. Hallelujah. God is calling for a new church, a new look, a fresh look. No longer are we going to look the same, but we're going to be a new heaven and a new earth that is coming and being represented to the king to, to this place as a kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Philippians 3:20 says this. It says, for the citizen, our citizenship, yours and mine, our citizenship is in heaven. Hallelujah. This is where our citizenship is, from which we also eagerly await for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This, that word citizenship is our commonwealth, the constitution of the commonwealth, from the government of the law by which it is ministered. What law are we operating under? We're operating under the Word of God, the, the, what Jesus has died for us. And he says, I've given you all things, and this is what we are operating from. We are operating from his kingdom. We're operating from his rule. Hallelujah. Be that new heaven. Be that new earth. Be in is this time and this season. Just continue to reflect on what God is showing you and what God is doing in this time and in this season. Because God is wanting his church to look different. We're not going to be the same. We're not going to talk the same. We're not going to look the same. We can, see, uh, we can see time and time through scriptures that when the, when the, the disciples or, or individuals spent time in the presence of God, they were changed and came out different. Moses when he went and talked before the Father, he was in that place. He's, the children of Israel says, that says that you, gotta, you, you, you look too, there's too much on you. you got to cover yourself because I, we can't see upon you because he spent so much time in the presence of God that the glory of God was shining out of him. He was changed from the way he went in to when he came out. And the church should look the same when we, when we went in. We should come out. We should be that radiance that we look as if this, this has no effect. We're still the body of Christ. We're still operating from the kingdom. We're still operating with authority. Hallelujah. Because we are his people. We are created to be that new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are, that, we are the citizenships from heaven. Our citizenship is from above. Hallelujah. We see also Paul on the road to Damascus. He was breathing threats. He went out one way. But he came back another. 
He was changed because he got into the presence. God spoke to him. God brought a revelation to him, and he was changed. When he came out of the house, he was changed. He was ready to preach. He was ready to declare. He was ready to bring the good news. Church, we're that new heaven. We're that new earth in this season. Are we ready to come forth when, we, when, we're, when, we're, uh, when we're able to begin to interact? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to, to share the good news. I'm not just saying it boastfully, but I'm, I want you to be encouraged that, that change happens when we come into the presence of God. Because he's calling for us to be that new heaven and the new earth. You can see it all through the scriptures of how God is wanting his people to change, how they shouldn't look the same, that they shouldn't be a reflection of the world. We shouldn't look like the world, but we should look look like who our creator was, who he is inside of us. See, I, I think it's in Luke 17, it says that the kingdom of God isn't by observation, but it's from within is what are we manifesting? What are we bringing forth? What are we presenting? Because it doesn't just come by just looking, but it comes from us living it and displaying it and walking it out. It's a change from what we are speaking and what we are saying, what we are seeing and what we are speaking. It comes because it's manifesting now because we're living it. We're walking it. We're displaying it. It's not by observation, but it's within us. The kingdom of God, the new heaven and the new earth is is manifesting out of us. It comes forth from us. Hallelujah. 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 Even even with no one here, I still spit and sputter and still sweat. Hallelujah. Second Peter 3, uh, 15 through, uh, excuse me, 13 through 15 says this. Nevertheless, according to his promise. For like for new, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Hallelujah. Let me read that again. Nevertheless, according to his promise, his promise to you, look for new heavens. Look for the transformation. Look for what God is doing in the lives of, of people. Look at what God is trying to represent in the new earth in which righteousness dwells. Hallelujah. Verse 14, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to those things, be diligently to be found by him in peace. Hallelujah. The Prince of Peace. Without spot or blame, uh, and blameless. Verse 15, And consider that the long-suffering of our, of our Lord is salvation. This time that we have in, our, in this place of stay home and stay safe. We should have that peace that is found in our Lord. And as we find that peace, that we can also find as in that patience of just praising and worshiping Him, that, we, that, that the salvation comes forth. Our righteousness, our, 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 our security, our comfort from the Lord comes as we're standing and just being transformed from the inside out we're going we come we come in one way but we're changing as we come out as as also beloved brother paul according to the wisdom given to him which was written god is wanting his church to look different romans 2 4 says this or do you despise the riches of his goodness forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leads to repentance that long-suffering, that long-suffering also is patience. Remember when I spoke at the, at, from the beginning, from, I think it was from Hebrews, 20, or Hebrews 12, where it says that part of the fruits of the Spirit was long-suffering. The patience, long-suffering could be patience. That says that knowing that, the, that or do you despise the riches, the riches of His goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering? God's patience is honest during this time. He's wanting, he's, I believe that God is speaking and saying, sons, daughters, be patient. Don't be anxious because that's not of my kingdom. 
But what my kingdom presents is unshakable, is unmovable, and that long suffering and kindness and gentleness and peace, love, joy, that there should be no, no, no difference us, of, of us, that we should just be that reflection of God as we're staying and being in that place that we're, that we're in that p- place of patience in His peace. Because God is changing us. God is reshaping us. God is wanting His church to come out looking differently. Hallelujah. James 1, 4 says this, but let peace have its perfect work. Peace. Some, some I, you know, at the beginning of, of this, uh, of this um, stay-at-home order, there was times I had restless nights. I had restless nights. I didn't know, God, I, I, what, what is going on? What, what is tomorrow going to bring? Or what else is going to, what else is coming? But you know what? As I continue to stay in his word and continue to pray and ask him, patience had its perfect work because it allowed me to just reflect and that fear and that anxiety left because I was coming into that place. I was in that place that I could allow God to to speak through me, through him, all the clutter. There's time you may have to shut the TV off. To not hear, this, hear the negative stuff, but allow God to speak to you. Allow God to share with you. Allow God to release to you what he's sharing and what he's doing. Because we want to be able to be that new heaven and earth coming forth. That you may be, the, the, ver, uh, finishing off uh, James 1, 4. Uh, I'll start over again, but, but let peace have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Because when we get into that place and we allow God to work in our lives, He becomes that perfect and we become that we become perfect and complete in Him, that we lack nothing. We can rest assured that God is still for us. He's not against us. He is working. Even when we think that He's not, He's working, He's still working on our behalf. Because he's looking for us to just be faithful and obedient to just say, trust in me. We are to look to his word when our times of troubles and our times of of uncertainty, this is what we run to. We don't run to CNN. We don't run to Fox News, but we run to the word of God. Because he wants to transform us. He wants to reshape us. Because there's so much of what, what is not of him that the world just continues to try to put on us. That he wants us to be shaken from it. That he can then begin to reshape us. And, and represent us back into this earth. Represent us back into, this, into the, the, our spheres of, of influence. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 19 says, Now therefore... You are no longer strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizenships with the saints and and members of the household of God. Church, this is who we are. We are that new heaven. We are that new earth. That you are no longer strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizenships. You have the right to come, come boldly before the throne of grace. You have the right to begin to declare and decree those things. You want to change those things. We want to reshape the atmosphere. We begin to speak it. We begin to believe it. We don't just say the good words. We stand on the promises of what God has called us to stand for because he's called us to be the new heaven and the new earth. But it comes for us knowing our true identity of who we are, who you are, because you are kingdom people. You're kings and priests in this land. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 2 says this, and don't be conformed. Don't be shaped. Don't be con- construed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right there. The enemy wants to try to get a hold of our mind. He wants to put those things in our thought process. What if? What about? What are you? It, he's, say, he's saying that's the first thing he wants to try to capture is our thoughts. He wants to try to capture what we're thinking or what is being presented in front of us. But see, God is telling us. He says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is what's going to renew your mind. 
This is what's going to show you your kingdom citizenship. This is what's going to show you that you are from, you are from the heavens, that you are, from, you are that new citizen in that heavenly home, that you, you are presenting a new earth, a new heaven here in this earth. Because when God came, He came to say that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. We're the new heaven. We're the new earth here in this, in this, in this time, in this season, that God is saying, don't be conformed, but be renewed, by be, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God doesn't want you to look the same. He doesn't want you to look like the world. He's not saying, come and just look, blend in. We're not like, what is it, a, 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 a gecko or whatever, not geico, gecko, where they blend in with their, with, the, with their background. God is not looking for us to blend in, but he's looking for us to stand out. He's saying that his church, if we're not to be that city that is on a hill that is hidden, but we are to let our light shine, to let the glory of the Lord be, be known to all around, and then even in this dark world, that we are to let our light shine. We're not to look or to blend in with the world, but we are to be transformed. We are to stand out. We are to look different. We're going to look different. You're not expected to look like everyone else. Because you're not from this place. You're from the, your citizenship is from heaven. You are a kingdom person. You are a priest of the, of the God. That you are a changed individual. Hallelujah. This is who we present. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Last couple of scriptures. And then I'll be closing. I don't know if Pastor Nikki is going to share or play a song towards the end. But... Uh, I'm going to share just a few more scriptures and then I'll, uh, a couple more scriptures and then I'll be, I'll, wrap, I'll be wrapping up. So Revelations 21 says this. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Hallelujah. It's, it's the old self. That word where it says the first heaven and the first earth earth had passed away it's that old self that passes away it's that old person the old Fred that has passed away and where it says no more sea this is this isn't a natural sea it's not like we go and, and we see the ocean but this what there is no more sea it's for the earth shall, because if you look in, in, a, in Isaiah 11, uh, 11, 9, where it says, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That we are to be filled with that, his knowledge, with his purpose, with his glory, that we are to, we are, that it covers the sea, that his knowledge. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14, it says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. If we take a look at that portion also in, in that Revelations where it says, and there's no more sea, that's because God is putting it all inside of us. That's who we are to be. We are to be that reflection here in the earth that we operate from his fullness. We operate from his knowledge. We operate from all of God's wisdom because we're kingdom people. We are, we are that new heaven. We are that new earth that is being represented back here into the earth. Because we operate not from our own wisdom, but we're operating from the wisdom of God. We're able to tap into his kingdom. We're able to tap into the very throne room of God and begin to receive all of the knowledge and the wisdom that God wants us to move forward in because we're that new heaven. We're that new earth. Hallelujah. John 17, 5 says, And now, O Lord, our Father, glorify me, together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. This glory that was, that was meant to be carried from the beginning is you and I. We were meant to carry that. 
when God created Adam, he was in the very image of him. When the fall of man changed it all. But see, Jesus came, the second Adam, which he says, God, he's praying. If you look at this portion of scripture, he's praying for himself because he's, he's about ready to go to the cross. He's saying, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Because before the world was, there was Adam. Adam was presented. Adam was here in the earth because he said, let's make man in our image. God created Adam, which was meant to carry the glory of God here in the earth. But that changed because of the fall of Adam. So where God is representing his church today to be the new heaven and the new earth, to operate from our position that was once meant for us in the, in the beginning, and it still is meant for us through Jesus Christ, thank you. To God, thanks be to God who gave his son and said, no, I'm giving them a second chance to give them a representation of who I am and who they are in this earth. I'm creating a new heaven and a new earth and it's coming through them. Hallelujah. It's coming through you, church. You're the new kingdom. You're the new heaven. You're the new earth. It's, it's, it's the same kingdom that operates from God that is represented here in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you got that message. I hope you got that message. Hallelujah. Because God is wanting his church to be reshaped. God is wanting his church to look differently. Colossians 1.27 says, uh, said this. It says, To them God willed to make known that what is the riches of his glory, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's us, the new heaven, the new earth, being represented. We're going to come out looking different. We're going to come out smelling different. We're going to come out talking different. We're going to come out just completely changed. By, it's because God is reshaping, retooling, re-equipping. We're not the cruise ship. We're the battleship. He's looking for his army. He's calling for his army. And he's saying, rise up. We're going we're gonna to be ready for whatever wave the enemy brings because we're not going to be just, we're going to be ready because we're going to be the battleship. We're going to be ready for, we're going to continue to bombard the, the enemy's camp. We're going to continue to seek the kingdom of God. We're going to continue to present the kingdom of God here in the earth. They may try to shut churches down, but we're still, we're still worshiping. We're still praising. We're still gathering. We're still lifting up the name of Jesus. Don't give up. Don't just continue to praise God. Continue to lift him up because God is wanting his church to look differently. Hallelujah. So before I close, I just want to uh, um, give an opportunity for those. I, I, know, I know that it's different because... The sanctuary is empty, but you at home, if there's those of you that have needs, those of you that maybe, you know, Fred, uh, Brother Fred, I'm, I'm, I'm still struggling. I'm still having some, you know what? We want to pray with you. Put it on the screen. Put it, on, put it in the notes. Put it in the, in the comment section. And we'll pray for you because we're gonna, we want to lift up those needs we don't want you to, to continue to remain the same. Remember, God is wanting you to change. He doesn't want you to carry that burden. He doesn't want you to, to be alone. He wants you to know that He's here with you. Even though we're, we're apart, He's still here. He's with you. He's there with you. He sees you. He knows what you're pricing. He knows your need. He knows what you're typing. And He's going to move and He's going to answer each and every one of those needs. Maybe you're the first time watching Potter's House Live or Potter's House because you got an invitation from someone, a family or a friend member, and you're wondering, well, who's this guy that's spitting all over and, and sweating? We, you know what? We, just, we want you to just to come into this place and just know that God is for you. Even to those that, are, that maybe don't know God, this is an opportunity for you to come and establish your own personal relationship with him. So if you haven't made a commitment to serve the Lord, 
let us know. We'll pray with you. We'll get a hold of you. Give us. You can uh, message the church. You can call the church, and they'll and they'll, we'll connect with you, because we want. We don't want you to to think that you're in this alone. We're there with you. God is here with you. God want, is looking for you to be changed, even, because He said, He says that I uh, that He sent His only beloved Son to die for you. And that is for you. If you don't know the Lord today, or maybe you're making a recommitment, that is for you. God is wanting you to know that He's here for you. We're here for you. We want you to be encouraged. We don't want you to be thinking that you're in this alone. We are here with you. So I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you as we come together and we just worship you, we praise you. We thank you, Father, that we are that new creation, Father God. We aren't to look like the Word. We're not to fit in or we're not to blend in, but, Father, that we are to be transformed. Father, that we can be represented back into this earth, Father, as the new heaven and the new earth, Father. Thank you, Father, for our citizenship that is in heaven. Father, thank you that you created us in your very image. And, Lord, we just honor you today. Thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. I, I, I speak a blessing upon each and every family, each and every household that's watching and those that will be watching. Father, that, Father, that, that you will bless them and keep them and that the Lord will make his face shine upon them and give you grace. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace so, that, so they shall put my name on the children of Israel and they will be blessed. God is writing your name on his heart right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we do. We lift up those that are, that are feeling an affliction, Lord. Those that are feeling sick. Father, we lift them up to you. We thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Father, we thank you, Lord, that, Father, that by your stripes they are healed. Father, we release healing into their body right now. Father, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father, we speak healing. We speak, Father, the divine healing of God to come upon their life right now. Father, we purge out any negative, anything that is uh, uh, not of you. Father, just as we're shaking, Father, that, that sickness off of them, Father God. And Father, we are thanking you right now that, Father, that your very presence, that your healing presence is, is in their lives. Father, that you are healing, you're touching their bodies right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning and I had a, I had a left knee pain that, that was shooting through. through. And I, I don't know if, that, if that's, uh, I, I, it, it may just be because of me getting older, but if you have a left knee pain, God is healing that right now. He's saying healing come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we speak to the cartilage. We speak to the tendons. We speak, Father, to the fluid that may be around or, or maybe that is building up around that knee. Father, we say be gone in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Father, that you are the healer. You are the restorer. Father, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, healing come forth in the, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father, we do. We lift up, Father, those that are feeling oppressed, those that are feeling depressed. Father, we break that off in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak, Father, the joy of the Lord be their strength. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that, Father, that those that are feeling the weight of the world that is pressing, Father, that you say, cast all your cares upon me. And take up my yoke for it is he. Father, let him cast those cares off. Let him feel, Father, the strength of the Lord, that Father, that is coming in, the presence of the Holy Spirit manifesting in their life, that giving them the strength. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Hallelujah. Lift up your everlasting doors and let the King of glory come in. Hallelujah. The King of glory invading your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. We honor you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, even those that are, that are needing the, 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 the different needs, Father God. Father, we thank you that, Father, that you are opening up doors of opportunity. 
Father, what was, what was once shut for them, Father, now you are breaking forth those doors. You're busting open those doors of opportunity. Father, breakthrough come for those. Father, I thank you that you are the breaker anointing, that Father, that is breaking forth, Father, into these people's lives, those that have natural needs, those that have needs. Father, whatever the needs are, we thank you that, Father, that right now you are meeting every need. Hallelujah. There is no lack, Father, in your kingdom. Father, and your children shall not be begging for bread. Father, because this is the promise that, is, that they have that is in you. Hallelujah. So, Father, we lift up these needs to you. And we, say, we thank you right now in advance, Father, that you're answering and meeting every need in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you. We give you the glory today. Hallelujah. 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 And Father, as we just wrap down this time, Father, we pray into the, into, into the Pentecost. Father, we thank you. Father, as we are gathered, Father, we're not only we're not celebrating Pentecost. We are, we are actually participating in Pentecost. Father, because we are gathered together. We are gathered in our places. Father, just as Jesus said, tarry here. Father, the power of the Holy Spirit came as a mighty rushing wind. And Father, I release that over the households today. Father, that those that are gathering, those that are in that are still in, this, in, the, in their homes. Father, that the, that the sound of the mighty rushing wind, the very presence of God, just sweep into their homes, sweep into their lives. Father, that the outpouring of your Spirit, Father, just be spread abroad in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, we lift up next weekend to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We call them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. That, Father, that your spirit come and fill this place in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Continue to keep praying as we enter into next week, as we prepare for next week. Church, keep praying. Keep praying. Outpouring of God's spirit in a greater measure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we do, we thank you as we close this time. We, pray, we honor you and we praise you. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I think Pastor Nikki's going to share a song and then um, thank you. God bless you. Heaven come down and cover the earth.
with your glory. Cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Oh, cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with your glory. Heaven come down.